Uh, one of the company was sexually harassing people. Okay, one day he called me to his office. Yeah. But when I went, he was busy looking at his computer. And then he asked me to go to his side to show him my file, mm-hmm. which I found weird. <laughs> so once I took I took the file to his side, mm. that's when it started getting uncomfortable. Hey, he started touching my bum. When I reached out, the guy told me that the job will be in Uganda. He was Kenyan based in Uganda. And he asked me if I was okay with that. And of course, because I was desperate for a job, yeah. I wasn't really choosy. I said yes. Yeah. Then when I pick a Uganda, he comes with sandals and shorts. <laughs> And he tells me that, yes, there's a job here. I don't know what he was trying to do. You know, there are so many things that happen in other other areas mm-hmm. and foreign lands. So yeah. I don't know if he wanted to sacrifice me or what. When I was confused and stranded in Uganda, I remembered how my mom waited patiently for that bus in the wee hours of the night. Yeah. And here I am in a foreign land not knowing what i was coming here guys my name is sebastian and i just want to officially welcome you back to another episode of the kenyan entrepreneur daily around here we talk about what is happening in the business and tech spaces but every friday in case you're new here we usually have a segment called employed where i get to call one of the subscribers on my channel and just have a conversation with them about what they go through or what the employment experience has been and today i have another caller on the line Disclaimer for this video is uh, this is the third time I'm calling this person. The first time we did a full on 30 minutes interview and somehow the person who was in charge of that sort of just lost that footage and the recordings. So it's of great importance for me to say thank you to this subscriber because I know the kind of frustration that comes with having to do something more than once. Anyway, even as we get ready to get into this video, I have my drink here, so if you need to have a drink, make sure that you grab it before I get into this video. And I'm also curious about how you guys are able to get your drinks during this period. I have a trick that I use, but I'm hoping that one of these fine days I'm going to be able to share it with you. Anyway, without much further ado, let's get into this video. Okay. So the idea is just to hang out and have a normal conversation as you would with your friends on a Friday evening. So let's hear and see where this conversation goes. I hope she hasn't switched off her phone because it's a bit annoying when you have to do the same thing more than once. Can you hear me? Hi, how are you? I'm fine, how are you? I'm okay. So, I'm saying... Mm-hmm. First of all, I need to apologize for having to do this video more than once. And more than twice. <laughs> more than twice. <laughs> <laughs> but I yeah. feel like the conversation we had uh-huh. was a good one. So uh-huh. that is why we are trying as much as possible to make sure that we tell your story. Okay. Yeah, so the ground rules are, are that we don't mention any name, yours or the company that you worked for. Mm-hmm. It's just conversation. So no names, no allegations, just conversation. Okay. So just to begin with, uh, when did you mm-hmm. start? Um, when did you get employed? When did you get? When did you first get employed? Are we talking about payroll, or we are talking about also volunteer? General, general. As long as you are working for someone, whether you are volunteering or working for a salary, then. It's fine. All right, let's say 2015. Okay. Yeah. And wh- what was the nature of this? So this is now volunteering? Yeah, I was the corporate communications officer at the campus radio station for like two months, I think, yeah. Ah, okay. Mm. And then, because um, I have a vague um, memory of our conversation mm-hmm. from yesterday. Mm-hmm. And uh, I would like for us to focus on uh, three of those situations. Mm-hmm. Number one, how you got yourself in Uganda. And then number two, mm-hmm. how you are working for a company that the boss sort of had a CCTV camera except for his office. Mm-hmm. And then the last one where you mentioned you're working for, I think, an Indian company. Mm-hmm. And the boss that you used to send you money every time she was, she had done anything wrong to you guys. So okay. starting with the Uganda situation, how did you get yourself into it? 
first of all, I was I was looking through the way a job seeker would yeah. look through the different sites and not get a job. So there is normally a Facebook page mm. where most job seekers try to uh, get links of uh, jobs. Sometimes employers look for employees from that site. From yeah. that site. So I was looking through the site and then I came across someone who was asking if there's someone who's done journalism before yeah. and is in Kenya. So I reached out. Mm. So when I reached out, the guy told me that the job will be in Uganda, will be based in Uganda. So this was a Kenyan that was based in Uganda? Yes, he was Kenyan based in Uganda. Okay. And he asked me if I was okay with that. And of course, because I was desperate for a job, yeah. I wasn't really choosy. I said yes. Okay. So after some time, I forgot actually that he ever asked or he ever told me about the job. Yeah. So after some time, he called me mm. and asked me if I'm still on with the job. And I said yes. And he told me yeah. it's... Uh, he apologized that he has to call me very urgently mm. for the interview because I think it was two days to the interview. Yeah. And since I didn't have yellow fever, I didn't have transport, uh, whatever, passport and all the things that were needed. Okay, Uganda, you don't need a passport, but you need a temporary pass. Yeah. So I had to rush through to get all this yellow fever and all this stuff. Mm. And and go to uganda yeah then when i pick a uganda he comes with sandals and shorts <laughs> and he tells me that yes there's a job here and of course when mm. you come to a foreign country and you're not even familiar with it mm -hmm. uh the first thing you want to know is where is the company i have carried my documents mm. i'm thinking maybe i'll meet someone in a suit in a in an mm. office then i meet someone with coming with shorts and sandals in a motorbike so for me as yeah. a woman i think we have instincts so automatically <laughs> i sense this was fraud the intuition aspect of it i kept on asking about the job and he always he told me yes the job is there but he dodged the conversations around what kind of job is this mm. and who are the employers yeah. like he it's like i don't know what he was trying to do you know there are so many things that happen in other other areas mm -hmm. and foreign lands so yeah. i don't know if he wanted to sacrifice me or what <laughs> but the moment i sensed danger and i could tell from how he could dodge the conversation about the employer and mm. where the offices are yeah. i think he got mad and also got mad at some point mm. i didn't know where i was but i just told the nearest uh, person who was with a motorbike to take me where i can get a bus so where did you guys meet we met you know i can't remember the, oh, the, the exact, exact building yeah but was it in a restaurant or no Vile tu na tokanga kwa stage you uh, call the person who who uh who's supposed to come for you or yeah, yeah. where i can be able to get to the office mm. and he tells you just uh, take a motorbike a light at this place and when i alighted i didn't see any building i only saw a highway and then what? he came with a motorbike as well and then we started walking yeah. <sighs> It was just <laughs> crazy, you know. So you mentioned that at this time you are not working. So how are you, how were you able to pay for all these um, things? The yellow fever vaccine and the transport. Was it you? I was I was staying at home. Actually, it's my mom who catered for the yellow fever and everything else that I needed. Yeah. I remember even that night that I was supposed to travel. Mm hmm we were waiting for a bus since i was in akuru yeah we were waiting for a bus and me and my mom sat in that car for a long time because i think the bus is supposed to come from nairobi yeah and when i was confused and stranded in uganda i remembered how my mom waited patiently for that bus in the wee hours of the night yeah. and here i am in a foreign land not knowing what i was coming here to do even when i came back to 
to Nakuru, mm. I didn't tell my mom that I didn't get that job because I think it could be the most devastating news she could ever hear. Yeah, and yeah. she could also fear that maybe I can I can I can uh, meet more people like this who are con men. Yeah, yeah. And you know, fears of every mom is that your daughter shouldn't be exposed. So, so I told her when I came back to Nakuru Nakuru I actually told her that I got a, I, got, I got a job but I'm not willing to relocate to Uganda. I stuck with that and she never she actually wondered why I'm not okay shifting to Uganda. Yeah. But I think she respected my decision and she was a bit okay because mm. I'll be in Kenya. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's how I stopped talking about Uganda. Actually, no one in our family knows that the job never went through, and there was no job actually. Yeah. What? So now, after that Uganda situation, how long did it take you before you got yourself into another job? It took me, I think, some few weeks because. I think my LinkedIn is well positioned. Mm, mm. My profile on LinkedIn is is uh, very good. So yeah. I had already put it out there that I'm looking for a job mm. and someone reached out to me. Yeah. So this employer asked if I could come for an interview which I went. I mm. think there were two interviews. Okay. And I was called for a job. It was a very big position honestly, but the pay was less. You are given uh, a massive office, you know, <laughs> you I don't know, there are people who think offices are better than pay. I don't know what So okay. it's a big title, but your pay does not reflect it. Yeah, it wasn't aligning with the title, mm. but it was a big office, like it was a really huge office. Yeah. Honestly. So once I got to the job, first mm. of all I realized we were very few people. Okay. I think uh everyone had their own office and everyone had a big title and those who had lesser titles had other positions like they could carry two positions at the same time what was this company doing it was a green what how do i call it environmental environmental farm and Envi- it's envi- environmentalist i don't know how to call it it was <laughs> dealing with environment Ah, it was okay. the audit, the audit, uh, environment audit, anything to do with the environment. Yeah, Just yeah. ensuring buildings are are in line with and the environment laws, and also ensuring that buildings are green. Mm-hmm. How we are going, all green. Yeah. yeah. So those are the things that they were doing. So what happened was, when I came in, there was this story going around mm. with an article that my predecessor had written. I never met my predecessor. Mm. I just heard of her. So why was this article that... published? It wasn't published. I think it was in her blog and then she sent to the employees. I don't know actually where the uh... source was, but I'm just thinking it was from her blog. Yeah, and then the employees sort of shared it around. Yes. So there was word going around and even the article supported mm. that there was a lot of sexual harassment going around which made even the predecessor go Mm -hmm. and i was a bit scared so i asked around because i think we were a few few women so i asked around and the men were even telling me don't stay for too long at night yeah in the evening live with us in the morning just ensure that you don't go upstairs you know Wait, so yes, the allegations were that the boss, the owner of the company, was the one who was sexually harassing people. Yes, the okay. owner of the company was sexually harassing people. Yeah. So what happened was, uh, when I came in, he mm. was very nice, by the way, very nice. Yeah. And I never thought, I actually thought for some time that people were were making wrong allegations and he could ask me what have you had so far you know and i never said about it but i wondered why Mm -hmm. would why would people accuse him he is very good he's very open you know if he had to sexually harass someone everyone could know but anyway i was so careful as well Mm -hmm. so one day he asked me to first of all cctv cameras were in every office every Mm -hmm. corner of that of that office the whole office and he could 
easily be able to tell because all the CCTV cameras were linked to his office. He's the only one who could be able to see what is happening with everyone. Yeah. So, uh, first, the the CCTV cameras were all over the office except his office. Okay. And then his office, you had to climb up the stairs to get to his. It was the only office upstairs in the boardroom. Was it a warehouse or just a, a one floor kind of office? No, it wasn't. It wasn't a warehouse. It was just one office. I think he had bought a big. I think a big office. Oh, like and these offices with with high with high walls, and then now you're able to create a room upstairs. Yeah. Okay. So once, okay, one day he called me to his office, and normally you had to do. Okay, it was a different kind of. Uh, work environment mm. because people are not just given deliverables you are given like a sheet of paper and every deliverable had marks so at the end of every month they could rate according to how you scored per per mark mm -hmm. and for you to score the marks he had to sign everything that you do let's say you're doing a strategy he has yeah. to sign if it's okay and if he doesn't sign it's a zero if he asks you to repeat he'll give you some mark so these are like the marks are based on your KPIs or job descriptions. Yeah. Those are your KPIs now. Okay, okay. So so I was taking my work to his office to mm. get one of his signatures cuz yeah. it was routine. Yeah. And this time round he asked me to normally when you go to an office you have this visitor seats and mm -hmm. then the person seated or the person who whose desk it is is yeah. seated on the opposite side yeah but when i went he was busy looking at his computer and then he asked me to go to his side to show him my file mm -hmm. which i found weird <laughs> so once i took i took the file to his side mm -hmm. that's when it started getting uncomfortable and he started touching my bum and then it, it's like he was just intending to lift my skirt up and by the way in this office you are not supposed to wear tight stuff you mm -hmm. are not supposed to wear makeup there were some rules so even in your decency yeah he still uh wanted to touch me so i think oh yeah I, know, sure I acted so fast because is... i ran i ran out of the office and i went straight to the admin who mm. was also the receptionist yeah and I was panting and I didn't even have the right words to say. And of course, I'm sure he was looking through mm, yeah, the Yeah, because he had the CCTV, yeah. Yes. And I told the lady what has happened, what had happened. Mm. The lady didn't say much. She said, okay, just calm down. What happened? And she didn't even advise or say anything. Yeah. She just told me to do my work and act as if nothing had happened. Wait, how, how are you guys being hired? Was it the boss that was doing the interviews of this admin person? Everyone was doing the interviews for you. It was a small team. So ah. if you're going for an interview, all of them were there. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so it was... Okay, after that, I think now I understood what my predecessor was talking about. Mm -hmm. And of course, it wasn't so good. I couldn't even see... I couldn't even look at the the ceo straight to his face mm. i was so uncomfortable even during meetings i never ever went to his office again yeah and i think he also started becoming hostile because everything i did was also trashed so <laughs> i started looking for another job luckily i think i have this kismet with job sometime yeah. so i got another job and I left the company. Actually, I never even took my last salary. The way someone would wait for their salary and then leave. Yeah. Me, I just wanted to go. I went and I told them I'm unwell and I faked another illness that I, I can't even remember the name because it didn't exist. Mm -hmm. Just Googled it up and told them I'm <laughs> off. What? And after that, I think it was over, you know. So do you think... Wait, mm -hmm. when you're in this company, did you have friends there? And do you think this, this is something that is still ongoing? 
<clears throat> I I had friends mm. friends who have already left now yeah. but they were male. Ah, okay. There are very few women and I don't know there's a way I don't normally connect so much with women in companies. <laughs> it usually <So>. <laughs> happens even the last interview that we had. Uh-huh. The person I interviewed was talking about um, how 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 hard it is for mm-hmm. female co-workers to coexist. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think there's a lot of kuna kwanga na yo jealous. Yeah, competition. Women always want something better. Mm-hmm. So they don't always want any other woman to accomplish yeah, that. Okay. So from our conversation yesterday, I just remembered you, you mentioned mm-hmm. working for a Congolese company startup that was in Kenya that yeah. sort of had the issues with payments. Yes. That one. Yeah. Now, that was I always say that's like my first real job. I think it's because that's the first time I started working uh on what I had studied in campus. So what happened was when I went there, yeah. The company was okay. I think we even had incentives when going for lunch. Okay. Was it incentives or what? How do we call oh, they it? They were giving you lunch allowances. <clears throat> Uh, they had paid the restaurant a certain percentage so if you if you eat more than that you pay and it was a bit it wasn't too much they could pay 200 shillings so if you pay if you eat more than 200 oh, you pay the extra ah, so this was on, yeah. on an everyday basis it was an, on an everyday basis when i joined ah. then after some time i don't know what what happened with the finances we stopped getting paid in time mm. we started getting paid half kidogo kidogo it wasn't even half we weren't even sure when mm. and then it started being quarter per week you know <laughs> if they get money that's when they pay you if they get so you weren't even sure when you're going to be paid mm-hmm. sometimes we couldn't even go to work cuz we didn't even have that fear to go to work yeah. and they started giving us there was a vehicle that could pick us and sometimes also the vehicle is stranded you know crazy you so know. what happened yeah. was i think we were in our second year anniversary mm. and uh there's something about <laughs> congolese they love fun <laughs> but again we had to be realistic you know the company is not doing well and then we are in a meeting and we are told we are going to celebrate our second year anniversary okay so we were told we are going to go to kempinski for our second year anniversary wait so had you joined this company mm-hmm. uh, at the initial stage or you got in when they are already operational No, they were already they were already in operation. They were already in operation. I didn't join when they started. Okay, okay. So, I think it was after their first year that's when I joined. Mm-hmm. First year, yeah, I think they had already celebrated their first year. Okay. So, so now this when, second time they were planning mm-hmm. for like a second year anniversary, sort of a celebration of uh, yes, being in operation. It was a dinner years. celebration. Okay. So they invited some of uh, Congolese they were well connected in Congo so they invited some of the Congolese some of them were ministers and we held the event in Kempinski. Yeah. Now I don't know how our men got to wear suits. There was a dress code by the <laughs> way even with our money not being in time. Okay. So we had a dress code I think it was black and red. Because I think those black, red, and white was those were the the company the team colors. corporate colors. Which yeah, year was so this? We, it was in uh, 20, 2017, I think 2017. Okay, okay. So we went we went to Kempinski, mm. and it was great. But now deep down. I was wondering <laughs> how are we even in Kempinski yeah. and these same people cannot even afford to give us half our salaries you know and even when it came to awarding awarding employees mm-hmm. we didn't have something concrete to give them to just certificates so <laughs> this guy was spending money at Kempinski for a celebration yeah but they are not paying you guys 
they weren't giving us money and actually when i i it flickered a point and i realized there's nothing i'm doing in this company you know yeah because if you so look at I it quit. from that perspective sorry for cutting mm. you off Mm-hmm. So 2017 um, was just two years after Obama had can, had come to Kenya and he had supposedly listed there. So there was this hype around Kempinski. Yeah. So for anyone to do an event there, it would mean that they have a lot of money at their disposal. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I keep forgetting that. So this, uh, been been in such as a five star. Is it a five star or what? Yeah, star? it's a five star, I think. It's it's a five star hotel and yet we can't even afford our own salaries and our salaries were were really less considering that was my first job mm-hmm. so I wondered what was happening so when I quit I yeah. actually left them with a lot of arrears on my side and you know mm-hmm. I was even thinking of suing them but then even if I sue them they're not even able to pay the rest of the stuff yeah. so I just left them to be <laughs> and I looked for greener pastures. We still speak with those people yeah. and they are actually with this containment time they are going through a hard time. Wait, the employees think... or the owners of the company? The employees are not getting paid right now because you see it's it's never stopped with 2017 mm-hmm. saga. Yeah. The 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 all the money have been stalled till today. Even there are people who left and they have not paid, they have not been paid so it's not like it's just one person who was affected there mm. were so many people who are yeah. who were affected what yeah so <laughs> i'm glad that i left at that time because i don't know what i could do right now mm-hmm. mm. ah, yeah. there are two stories that you told me yesterday one you were mm-hmm. working for i think a pr company as a consultant and her PR agency uh, yeah agency and then the other one was about uh, this Asian owned company mm. so maybe we can just rush through those two because I remember you said you have very few minutes so okay. after now this Congolese experience which company mm. did you go to the PR agency or this um, after, Indian, <clears throat> Asian after, company after the Congolese, that's when I went for the Uganda, and then I went to the sexual assault in company. Ah, the Congolese one was the first one, and then you went to Uganda, mm. and then came back to this company that was uh, promoting sort of green whatever. Yeah. And then you went to the PR agency now. You no, know, after after the sexual whatever mm. company, mm. I went to the one that. I told you three months I wasn't paid, and then they uh, oh, yeah, took me yeah. in. Yeah. And after they took me in, now it was half the pay which I couldn't survive with, so I quit. Yeah. And then I went to the Kirinyaga one. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Wait. Yes, and then now the PR agent. Talk agency. to us about the three months one. The three months one. Yeah. Oh, that one. Okay, mm. so I after I left. Uh, after I left that that farm of where there was a lot of sexual assault, mm. I was called by one lady. I had applied for a job and went for an interview, Kitambo, but mm. I told them the pay was less. So they had this gig that had come up yeah. and they were looking for someone who's familiar with events. Mm. So they asked me to be a sort of like one who will be representing them when uh the event will be the event was supposed the post pre uh the pre event event and post event was supposed to take a period of three months so they wanted someone who'd be there for three months so we talked about the pay and i i, I started but yeah. there was no contract there was no written contract yeah so i started going for meetings with though it was a parastatal mm. so i could go to the meetings representing this farm yeah and one month passed i had done so much actually a lot more than what i thought i could do mm. because i was even consulting people who are good in events some who are in media because there were contacts that were needed that were for high profile people and they didn't know mm-hmm. so i could link my i could link with uh, media people that I know and other PR people whom I know yeah. have interacted with these high-profile people. 
So I did a lot when it comes to writing, when it comes to organizing, when it comes to contacts. Mm. And the first month passed, I asked for my salary. I was redirected to the parastatal. Parastatal redirected me to the farm. So there was a lot of back and forth and they gave up. So okay. the farm blamed the parastatal for not paying because uh, the event was about a sponsoring uh, okay. sponsoring them to get some funds so they hadn't gotten enough money and they couldn't pay us so maybe they pay us after the event okay. so there was a lot of dispute and they continued working for three months yeah. in between i think they stopped consulting us anymore because of the back and forth yeah. so i was i was i was retained as a staff in this farm in the past now no, not the parastatal, the farm that had hired me. Okay. So the farm that had hired me uh, gave me a big title as well, no, not much pay, because <clears throat> I was in charge of programs, and programs meaning events. Yeah. So what happened was they gave me half the pay that I was supposed to be given by the parastatal. Ah. So it wasn't really adding up so i really strained uh, i was straining before because of no pay for three months and i continued to strain even afterwards so it wasn't really it wasn't really for me so i quit and i quit with no plan b so i stayed out for some time yeah and that is when i told you i'd gotten that job that they mistook me i think for three days <laughs> and then I went I think, back home. I think you should tell that story of how <laughs> you got <laughs> hired by mistake and then got fired after three days. I that wasn't fair. You know, <laughs> I had gone. I had been. I had been home. Imagine, because yeah. none of the the way you can stay in Nairobi for too long until you start seeing your rent is just adding up and you don't have enough money to pay. So I went home, mm. and I got okay. I got an interview as i had applied for sales and marketing manager so mm. i went and i wasn't called afterwards actually they they gave me a regret they sent me a regret message yeah then after a month they call me the same people call me <laughs> and they tell me i've mm. gotten a job as an account manager account manager in this sense is managing clients for now social media platforms no no it's about uh you have to follow up with clients ah. on it was a tracking firm so you have to call clients who haven't paid and follow up with them visit them just making oh. sure that so each, each client is an account so making sure yes, that now each client is an account supposed to pay exactly yeah. so i went there for orientation mm. i hadn't even been given a contract i was just told that i'll be taken through what is done i was even told that i'll be handling banks yeah and after some time i think it was after three days mm. i started asking for my <laughs> contract yeah then the hr told me send mm. me your cv i think i don't have it so I sent to her and that is when everyone stopped talking to me. The head of the department and the HR went for a meeting the whole damn day. I wasn't even given a task. You know, interns were doing things, but me, yeah. I wasn't even doing anything. No one was orienting me anymore. So, so who did the interview? Because if the HR says she die, he or she doesn't have your CV, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, you know, that's when I started sensing there's something wrong. Mm. So... Ali, I asked for the contract, you know, when you, with the former job that I was in, and in like three months without a pay, mm. the problem is, was with no written contract. So I've always asked for a contract everywhere I go as the first thing. Yeah. So when I realized I've not gotten a contract in the third day, I went to the HR and asked if I can get my contract. So she asked if, she, she told me she doesn't have my CV on soft copy if I can send yeah i sent to her and she didn't say anything then the hod disappeared so apparently they had a meeting the whole day and I when know. i was going <laughs> you are the topic of was, the day uh, most likely because yeah. there's nothing i was doing mm -hmm. so after that when i was leaving 
I was called by the HR because I hadn't even seen the HOD. I was called by the HR and she asked, she told me, she asked me first, as the HOD talked to you, I told her no. So she told me, I, I don't think we will be needing your services anymore. Uh, the, po- the position is no longer uh, 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 whatever valid. Your po- position redundant. Re- you can't declare a position that was not there. You know, I hadn't uh, even started working. So what happens so, to, the th- to the three days that you had gone to work? Were you paid for them? Actually, they paid me more than I deserved. I think to just keep my mouth shut and here I am talking about it. <laughs> so Yeah, but that's the good thing with this show. We don't mention company names and even the people <laughs> that we're interviewing. Yeah, they, they sent me like a, a half a month salary. Uh, according to what we had negotiated yeah, and yeah. i had only worked for three days so that that's that's okay at least it's a cushion even though they wasted your time yeah but then uh if we're, go- if we're gonna be realistic chances are mm-hmm. in those three days that you were there maybe you mm-hmm. come a job in guinea new query yeah Maybe it was just God's way of making sure that I have money to survive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true, too. You never know why some things happen. Yeah, so that, that time actually was a very disparate time. And that's mm. why I settled for a, a job that was along Kirinyaga Road. Yeah. And I, I would say that it was a job I never thought I could ever take if I was ever asked. Yeah. But I stayed, I stayed for like two two and a half months mm. because there was a lot of witch hunt okay considering i was the only one who who hello see job i think it was i got I the job you, when i, I was think still your, there. Your, your your audio disappeared you said there was a, a lot of witch hunt because there was a lot of witch hunt because i was the only one who was a degree holder ah okay okay yeah so of Wait, course for the they... guys who are listening and they don't know mm-hmm. what Grinyaga road is known for maybe you can just give <laughs> <laughs> a brief highlight of what working uh, at Grinyaga road means Grinyaga road is where you take your car when <laughs> you have a when you have any issue mm. with any part that's where all you see what you say manga what wengi wezi wengi huiba toyota mm-hmm. toyota parts yeah when they steal those parts they take it to kirinyaga road like kirinyaga road <laughs> is where you'll get all kinds of shops of parts fake mm-hmm. and genuine yeah so that is where i went I actually went to a parts shop mm. where they were selling parts okay them they were selling genuine yeah but i was part of that and i was a marketing executive marketing coordinator so i worked there and wow i've never seen any really kwangani kiva anything there was a time on saturday i went with a truck mm. it was just the, sh- the just the trouser yeah. the top was just a normal top and i was told i was actually summoned i was told i'm wearing like i'm going for a holiday it wasn't a working day. Saturday wasn't a working day for people like us. Yeah. It was just a reporting day. So I wondered what was happening. The next time it was during this time when we had a lot of Ilkwenitwaji. Matatu zilikuwa zime zimeacha ku function. Yeah. I think because of the seat belts. Ah, yeah, yeah. It was the song called time miss... when people are walking kwa bridge wana wanaanguka na side, you know, oh, it was yeah, crazy. Yeah. That time when That's they were trying the time... to limit the number of matatus that get into the CBD. Exactly. That's the time. So, that time people were coming late. Mm. So, mimi ndio nilionekana. That's I I took I took uh, the fault for everyone. I was given one in letter. Actually, nilipo one in letter ji address code hiyo Saturday. The second one in letter was when coming late. I was told I was given a list of the whole week not coming early yeah. and it's because of that matter to crack down. Mm-hmm. I tried to explain no one listened. So, <laughs> mimi kanza kutafuta job because niliona hapa staka and that's when I was called for the PR agency job. Yeah. PR agency was good. Honestly, the pay was good mm. and um 
I, ah, I think I the love now, the, the bipolar job. boss you are talking about. Yes. Yeah. Now, hey, uyo, the thing is, there was a good environment. Working environment with my fellow colleagues was excellent, especially the fact that he wasn't always in Kenya. Mm. So the problem with her is that she was always jealous. You know, I think she was afraid that we might end up taking over the company or starting our own farm. Yeah, like so competing we, farms. Exactly. So she could always have a Skype call like every second. Every time she's mad at us, <laughs> Skype call all of us. And you're asked, have you had, you start from 1 to 20. Say yes, 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 yes. Another question, say yes. It was just crazy. And then mm. she had a problem with people being happy because her life wasn't good mm. she was having problems mentally and she had a child who was suicidal and the husband was in an asylum so she wasn't always happy with anyone who was having a happy life the minute you are in a relationship you become a threat in that company what? she makes you feel like you're the worst in any work that you send to her and the same work she'll t- she'll send to someone else she likes mm. and then atasema this is the perfect job and that person probably has put commas <laughs> and full stops and sent to her now atasema this is the perfect thing that uh, grace has ever done oh gosh <laughs> <laughs> now grace is your co-worker Yes, I just mentioned names. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. Anyways, it's okay. It's okay. No, so, one, no kuna grace wengi sana. Hata kusikia. Anyways, so mm. that is how it was. It was crazy and we tried uh, to work with her because sometimes if you, even you're going to a client with her mm. and the client sides with you. Yeah. Like you can be discussing about something oh, yeah, and like you a give a point or whatever and then if your yes, idea comes then, out as a better one and I can exactly. Yeah. So the client supports your idea and tries to tell her that you see actually we can do this. The minute she sees that you're actually a threat. Utatolewa as an account manager in that in that company. So that wow. that's how it was and then also if you if you're having a car if your life is good she never wanted people to be happy in short Any, as long as and you have could... anything that sort of quote and quote is better unakuwa mm. doing sasa unakuwa adui kwanza alikuwa na mess with your self esteem alikuwa mm. nakuuliza which journalism class did you attend i think you missed your journalism classes you're not you have an attention disorder do you even hear you know she could tell you something and it, even it's on email yeah. and she tells you send that and once you send that she asks you who told you to send that and you clearly show in circle yeah, this like is this what you proof. sent me anaruka and she anaruka anasema i don't i'm not the one who sent you that and after a few minutes mm. she'll then come back to her senses and call you telling you i'm so sorry i don't know what i was doing <laughs> she could even fire people the next day she tells them to come back okay we are going to need help <laughs> talk, talk to us about this now the last job you had before your current how did you end up there okay that job i was actually poached i was poached by the he was that that time he was the COO mm. at the Kirinyaga Road company oh where there and was which hunting happening exactly yes yeah. so he was he became the GM at a very good company actually a very big company yeah and he poached me he actually sent me he he told me if I'd want to be a marketing coordinator in the company he was in mm. and then he asked me if not you I'd want someone whom you know yeah So after rethinking I said actually I'm up for it. Mm-hmm. And I went for two interviews, the first one with him, the second one with the directors and I got in. Yeah. So when I joined it was good. Honestly, it was good. The working environment then was very good. Yeah. I was treated well. My ideas were always respected. We could always implement anything I say. So what was hey. the title in this company? I was a marketing coordinator actually. Uh, so you But in that company, mm. uh, marketing coordinator is like a high level. I Job, don't know what yeah. to call it. You we had three directors yeah. who were sisters mm. and then they were answering to the owner who's their dad. <laughs> so family business. 
yes it's a family business so marketing coordinator mm. was answering to the director yeah so the position wasn't it was a high title because you were making decisions many decisions so mm. many times yeah and you were only consulting the director sometimes but she could always approve most of the things you do mm-hmm. so when i joined i implemented a lot of stuff okay then i think that that mama liked me now the director or the owner of the company uh, yeah the director whom i was answering to was very good to me yeah. i was actually hearing stories of people wana somewa wana shoutiwa wana insultiwa mm. but i never actually really saw that mm-hmm. i i saw maybe maybe it happened before but after i came in maybe she changed i don't know yeah so it was the first time she shouted at me and held insults was when i was in an event okay we had i had been sent to the team of technicians to do a an event set up mm. so we arrived really late and it was in timau and it was so cold yeah so we set up when our fingers were numb we tried and did our best The next morning to Karauka mm. we set the whole place and it was massive so tunajaribu kuweka our brand everywhere to be seen so it was a event I'm at the day before it is a day before the event okay. so that's when you're doing the setup yeah then of course we had carried some equipment so she comes later in the day when we are all settled and it was a bit rainy mm. so she comes checks the whole place she has no problem with the brand visibility and she doesn't even say it's nice yeah then she goes to the equipment looks at it and says who cleaned this why is it not clean <laughs> and then she calls everyone and that time the supplier had come i think the supplier was even explaining about the equipment yeah and that's when akanza this is all shitty do what <laughs> you know <laughs> she <laughs> has <laughs> a background <laughs> from Yeah, alikuwa anasema hivyo mbele ya kila mtu, mbele ya supplier, mbele ya technicians and you know these people are the people you talk to. Yeah. Like you tell them to do things. Mm-hmm. You know, wakikuona unapigwa kelele, they can never Kuna respect you. Flani inapotea. Kweli. Unanisikia? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so of course walikuwa wana wanasikia nikipigwa kelele and they're just there, you know. And I knew they la- they lo- they're looking at me like someone who's incompetent now. Mm-hmm. So it was really bad even the supplier talked to me, yeah. you know? Yeah. He told me these people have lost a lot of good people because of this. They don't know how to treat their workers and I told him I never saw this coming. You know, this lady has been so good to me. Mm. But I stayed. It's one of the places that I stayed for some time. Yeah, yeah. I stayed and kept up with the all this ma- insults and the shouts. And you know, this mama didn't know how to op- apologize. Hadji kusema sorry. <laughs> so what she does is she sends you money. And yeah. she sends you money after you forgotten this whole story. So she called me mm. one day. I think it was a month after or three weeks after. It was kitambo as in una hata una sahau yeah. so ananipigia na niambia okay what are you doing for the weekend and because she's my boss nafikiria maybe anataka kunipea kazi yeah. nikamwambia okay um i'm not doing much if you have any work to give me it's fine i can be able to handle it. it yeah but ananiambia no it's not work related i just want to know what you're doing <laughs> so I tell her I'm watching movies and then yeah you know how you can tell your boss ndo asione we ni funny person. Mm-hmm, yeah. So I can yambi I'm actually sending you some cash please go enjoy yourself during this weekend. Hi yeah. And she sends me cuz most of the people know me for my Airtel line so if she asks for my Safaricom line nikaona mm. DTB me ni to me a 7000. <laughs> And me yeah, I went yeah. and enjoyed myself but sasa nilishuku. Yeah. Unajua mimi 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 naogopanga vitu za free. So nikaanza ku call the people who are close to me in the company and I asked them mm. is it is it uh, a normal thing that happens? Exactly. Yeah. So nikaambiwa oh alisha kupiga kelele nikaambia but ni kitambo kaambia <laughs> yeah. okay that's her way of apologizing just take and forget that she ever gave you because she'll never mention and that's what she was doing 
wow. you know she had her moments mm-hmm. like there are times that she could be really good to you and there are moments that she could be really bad to you yeah. and sometimes it could be issues uh, from home yeah, yeah. so sometimes ana kuja na kuongelesha poa alafu after some few minutes anabadilisha <laughs> tempo yake ilikuwa inapanda you know she was seated behind me mm. like it was set up in a way that your the director the director whom you answer to is directly behind you na iko ah. in a glass ako in a glass office and can see what you're doing uko atuko tunashika phone ati una hakuna kitu ya phone ama marketer <laughs> lakini hakuna phone sasa <laughs> wewe you marketing product za kampuni bila simu oh what was sales wana piga simu wewe kazi yako ni kuangalia facebook and all and you're the only one who's entitled to looking at facebook you know the it person yeah. is also checking if you're doing the work that you're supposed to do mm-hmm. akikono mengia whatsapp we had to do new incognito window because uh, if you go through the the way ebile <laughs> mewekwa wanakupata and yeah. ukipatikana hiyo ni leta it was crazy and una really pick a point mm. i was even naanza kushtuka yeah. una una schedule na yako unaona tu umekuwa numb yo you come on your session inakuja ama ni nini alikuanga tu you know there was a time it was me her case yani alikuanga tu anaingia kama kwa na stress mm. the one who she'll vent it out on is grace I think it's because there was the one who was answering to her a lot. Yeah. It was crazy. It was crazy. I think it started affecting my health. Nikaanza kupata ulcers. Nilikuwa ngatu na gonjeka. Yaani nio kupata stress every time. Unashtuka shtuka every time for no reason. Ukiona tu text yake unashtuka. Yeah. And you know how she didn't have these filters at kuonyesha mtu atiekea <laughs> or Yeah, yeah like na sema it is na kona hizi ma, ma passwords mingi so mm-hmm. zinatoka tu zinatoka and she could shout well, akiwa kwa ofisi yake shout mimi naweza sikia nikio whichever place so ina maanisha kila mtu mna kwa ofisi anasikia everyone was hearing we so, were we were saying they are backing cuz <laughs> everyone could hear mpaka and then you know they were giving us food in the office like mm-hmm. you're given lunch yeah. you provided with lunch so she died likuwa mm. ta zingine anakwambia tu ma kitu before lunch and it's so impossible for you to send it unaniambia shall start i send a thing that i have to write for five uh, a five page document ni sandikaji in 30 minutes na uko ilikuwa strictly <laughs> one to two if you miss out on one to two you're not eating lunch nasaki kupata ukikula lunch na hujatuma ba sasa hiyo ndio ilikuwa anga shida so sometimes you even opt to just go outside and eat then sit down mm. and eat kwa sababu hata pita hapa kuulize why are you eating why are you eating <laughs> so sasa zingine ilikuwa anga hata unashanga hey, this is just crazy you know was this the it last wasn't... job that you are at before your current job now yes it was my last job before the current one ah okay Yeah. Hey, wewe umepitia yani. You should write a book. I it should write should, a book on my should, employment. Ebu andika andika kitabu. Andika kitabu what guys will promote you. Uh, I will. I will for this job start career starters. They yeah. should know this stuff. Anyway, I hope I hope you are in a better situation now. Yeah, I'd say way better. Yeah. And I just want to say thank you again for making the time. I know mm-hmm. we started off as a we were, we were intending to have like a 10 minutes interview it's almost one hour. <laughs> I know, you know, and now my deliverables have not been done. Utafanya. We experience uko nayo najua utahaka. But uh, okay. I hope somewhere along the road wao mwe kuandika kitabu because I will. I have a feeling that kuna vitu mingi bado huja mention kwa hii story. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. Yeah, so I don't know maybe some other time we're going to do a part two of this. But uh, even if we don't, please kama uko mm-hmm. na blog ama if you ever interested in writing a book, una forward it. Mm-hmm. I will. I sure will. <laughs> okay, so I think thanks for your time. 
Alright. I hope so, that so. Uh, wase watasikiza hii story watakuwa inspired in a way because sometimes people go through one or two ordeals and then they feel like it's mm-hmm. the end of the world. But when they get to hear about such stories mm-hmm. it gives them hope in a way. Yeah, true. So, thank you, thank you uh, for making the time. I hope mm. we catch up again soon. Yes, we will. Okay. Sawa, thank you so much as well. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. All right, bye. Okay. <laughs> so that was I think one of the longest uh, conversations that I've ever had on this segment. And I'm very open. If you have anything that you want to talk about and you just need someone to listen, I'm going to listen. So feel free to reach out. There's a uh, contact information in the description section of this video. And once again, my name is Sebastian. I hope that this episode has kept you company through your Friday evening. And I'm going to see you again tomorrow. On Saturdays, we do an episode called uh, Creatives Haven. So basically what we do is we teach you how to use digital platform, more specifically YouTube, so to set up, grow, and even monetize your channel. My name has been Sebastian. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. And peace out. Bye.